Good morning from St. John's Episcopal Church in and beyond Old Town Saginaw in the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. Today is July the 12th of 2020, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. The bulletin for today's Liturgy of the Word can be downloaded from our Facebook and YouTube post, as well as the St. John's website. With you at home, this is St. John's and St. Matthew's, worshiping together online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose. As a seed in the thing for which I sent it, for you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field 
shall clap their hands. And instead of the thorn shall come up the cyrus. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the earth with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. A reading from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. 
Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lures of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Each year on the first day of Lent, Ash Wednesday, we are reminded that God has created humanity out of the dust of the earth. When ashes from burned fronds from the previous Palm Sunday are imposed in the shape of the cross on our foreheads, we are confronted with the sobering truth, which echoes Psalm 103, verse 14, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Our lives both begin and end with God. This image of humanity as dust is seen initially in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where in the second account of creation, we read that God formed the first human from the dust of the ground, building blocks of the created order. It doesn't matter whether or not one takes the first 11 chapters of Genesis literally. The truth remains. God is responsible for bringing humanity into existence for the purposes of stewarding. We are primarily human beings and not human doings, meaning our value as human beings is not defined by what we do, as our culture tells us over and over again. Rather, what we do is to be in line with who we are in God's eyes. Humanity is created in the image of God, formed out of the dust of the ground to till and keep the earth, to cultivate the very things God desires for the entire cosmos. Smarter theologians than I say the Hebrew verbs employed in this creation story are verbs commonly associated with pottery. Such verbs allow us to imagine God sitting at a potter's wheel, God as an artist, God forming and shaping humanity, getting dirt, water, and eventually mud under the divine fingernails, while molding the image inherent in the raw materials. In today's Gospel lesson from Matthew, Jesus paints a picture of humanity as a somewhat different kind of dirt. Jesus refers to us as soil in a positive way. In the parable which begins in chapter 13, verse 3, Jesus says there is a sower. And sowers, to state the obvious, well, sowers sow seed. This particular sower casts seed which as we learn in verse 19, is the word of the kingdom, seed which contains the potential to blossom as the sower intends. Now, what exactly is this seed that is the word of the kingdom? 
may be one way of considering the word of the kingdom is by looking at the other creation story in the first chapter of Genesis where we read that for six days, God the Father speaks, God utters words, and God's words bring forth life, God's domain, God's kingdom, and God sees that what God speaks is good. Now, if we think of the word of the kingdom this way, the sower's seed contains within itself God's purpose for creation, and not just God's purpose for creation, but more importantly, the person in whom God's purpose is fully realized, Jesus Christ, who, as we learn in John's gospel, is the word of the kingdom, with a capital W. When the sower casts the seed, there are, of course, different places the seed lands, and where it lands determines what happens next. There's a path where the seed is left exposed to be consumed by birds. There's rocky ground with shallow soil, incapable of allowing sustained growth. There is thorny territory, which chokes off growth. Then there's the good soil, which yields much growth. Pam, Mary, Joe, and I have had to preach a lot of sermons recently, which in different ways have attempted to address the challenging issues our our nation and our world are dealing with right now. It's important for us to preach such sermons. But when we do, and I'll speak only for myself here, whenever I preach a sermon, I run a risk of drawing one's attention to the way I naturally approach an issue and away from how God speaks in Scripture. So I have to ask myself, Do my words in an atmosphere of heightened tensions represent more of God's will or my own? Do I speak only from a desire to make myself look good to my congregation or denomination? Or can I shed my false self enough to allow the listener to hear God speak? In the same way, Jesus told this parable after walking outside of the house to sit by the Sea of Galilee, there's a benefit to us in a disciplined way, stepping out of the arena that triggers stress, sitting ourselves down to contemplate God's creation, and to the degree that we can, hold all that is taking place in our world up to the light of Jesus Christ. The more I reflect on Jesus' parable of the sower and seed and surfaces and growth, the more I see how my life, my soil, my soul, my heart, my life is not always or immediately hospitable to God's seed. I am an imperfect surface. Yes, God bestowed on humanity an original blessing, as seen in the declaration that all of creation was very good. But when we keep reading Genesis, we quickly find that humanity is sinful. And that's a word we may not like, but we need to pay attention to it. Sin is easy to prove. Humanity continually misses the mark. Yes, we are made in the image of God and loved by God accordingly, but we do not always steward our individual lives and creation as God intends. The Confession of Sin in the 1928 prayer book refers to humanity as miserable offenders which is not a synonym for basket of deplorables. 
The intent behind the phrase miserable offenders is not to tear us down or hurt our self-esteem, but to wake us up. The words miserable offenders remind me that I am an imperfect surface. And paradoxically, being an imperfect surface is the very thing which opens me up to arguably the most important point of Jesus' parable. And it's this. The sower keeps scattering the seed. The sower is throwing that seed everywhere. It's like Oprah. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car. You get seed, you get seed, you get seed. There's nothing meticulous or laser-focused or pinpoint about the sower. Seed is being scattered lavishly. We might call it wastefully. There's seed going on to every possible surface there is. That is the grace and mercy of God. God casts the word of the kingdom in my direction until the word of God takes root in my life, transforms my being, shapes my words and actions, nudging me toward the full stature of Christ. Right now, on some levels, many levels, it may not seem like God is intimately involved with humanity. We question whether God is working in our lives to shape things for the better. We wonder if God has washed his hands of us and no longer has dirt under the divine fingernails. But the truth of the matter is that God has not withdrawn from the world. God is just as active as ever, if not more so. In Christ Jesus, we are reminded that in difficult times, God does not turn his back to humanity. God moves even closer And through God the Holy Spirit, we, the church, are empowered to be God's hands and feet in this world. We are the body of Christ. God's purpose for our lives is to be fertile soil, clay in the potter's hand, which is why God keeps casting the word of the kingdom in our direction until the word of God takes root in our lives, transforms our being, shapes our words and actions, nudging us toward the full stature of Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us profess our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning are form three, found in the bulletins and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In the St. John's family, we pray for Brian, Mike, Shirley, Nancy, Keith, Al and Jane, Sharon, Sally, David and Annette, Rod, Dave, Karen, Ted, Kurt, Pam, and the Standing Committee of the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Amelia St. Charles, Jill Wetmore, Evan Razutek, Jim Mack, Amy Simons, Nancy Kraus, and Karen Parr. For those celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, especially Susan Ludwig and Steve Kemsky. And from St. Matthew's, we pray for Sarah, Becky, Beth, Kim, Donna, Chris, Karen, Jason, Jim, and Mary Catherine. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in this holy sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come into your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.